Well, hello, emerging mothers. I am so excited that you all have spent uh, all week with me. We're on day six, and we will be having a special guest who will be joining us. Uh, of course, um, on Zoom and also on Instagram. So uh, she will be coming on Instagram here momentarily, and I am super duper excited about it. I am just elated that we've been together all week. Again, today is day six. And it's so interesting because we have had a number of topics we have discussed. Think about the topics we have discussed already. Uh, it has been we still have more topics to discuss on tomorrow also on uh, Monday and get here just able to hear me India yes I am okay okay or just barely, can you hear me pretty good or or just barely? I can hear you pretty well. Okay, awesome, awesome. Listen, today what I want to do is I want to welcome our guest. I'm super excited she's here. You all know that I have been talking about her for a while now. Uh, she's my first born daughter. I know her pretty, pretty well. Her name is India Nicole Lord. And right now, she is, of course, on the campus of Virginia Tech, and uh, she's wrapping up this semester. I know that uh, you have uh, heard that uh, time and time again because we are totally elated. And so what I'd like to do is um, talk about the topics we have covered thus far, and then we will go into our topic on today. So we have already discussed five indicators that your teen is not ready for adulting. Uh, and then also we talked about six mindset shifts to make before your teen transitions out of the home. Uh, we have focused on seven secrets to encouraging your teens to make good social choices. Then we went over into the no-nos, nine no-nos uh, when parenting from a distance. Because you know, you have a close-knit family like I have a close-knit family then of course you may not necessarily be ready for them to leave. But yes, we talked about those nine no-nos. And then also uh, the five ways to strengthen the bond after your teen leaves the home. And you know, we talked about that on yesterday and there were so many nuggets that were dropped. And I am so very excited uh, that you all were here to hear that. So today, out of my three daughters, if you all know, I have three daughters, India, Iman, and Ivana. Today, we have India with us. And, you know, on another occasion, I'm sure that you will see uh, Iman as well. And then who knows, down the line, I'll bring Ivana on as well. But today, we have India. And what I wanted to do on today is I wanted to just chat just a little bit about what it's like to be on the college campus and then also to understand the perspective of a college student because i'm sure it's slightly different than our perspective and so india if you will begin by just introducing yourself sharing a little bit about you and then i'll be ready to ask you of course my first question Sure thing. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to start off by saying thank you so much for allowing me to uh, join you in this time and share a little bit of my, about my perspective as a college student and about to graduate. Um, my name is India Lloyd. Like my mother has said, born and raised in Houston, Texas, accepted a student or gone off to college in, at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, Virginia. Right now, I'm very active on campus. My major is industrial and systems engineering with a minor in leadership and social change. And then I also like to get involved as well. So I have a couple of leadership positions. I'm the president of the NAACP or the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And then I am also an ambassador for my major. Um, I have two jobs on campus. I'm a residential advisor. And for those of you who do doesn't know, this just allows me the chance to look over um, and manage about 60 plus residents on a daily basis. And then I am also a uh, assistant for the writing center. And so I act as 
um, conversation support and allow international students to perfect their English in a way. Um, a couple fun facts about myself is that I absolutely love to travel. I've been blessed with the opportunity to travel while I've been in college. So I traveled to Europe, went to Italy, Germany, and Switzerland and had a blast. And then I also, this is a hit or miss with some people. I love pineapple on my pizza. Um, I have accepted a full-time position with Lockheed Martin after I graduate this upcoming May, and I am extremely excited about that as well. Yay! Ah! <laughs> I'm so, so very excited. And guess what, Emerging Mothers? You will be excited as well. You wait till you're in my shoes, and some of you are. And you are in the group, and of course, your second or your third uh, child is going off, and so you will be just as excited. And guess what I'm going to do? When we fly to Virginia, guess what? I think I want you all to experience that with me when we go, and it'll be, of course, a virtual graduation, but nonetheless, um, we'll, we will be on the campus, and of course, I want to take you all with me, and so DM me, put down in the DM if you want me to take you with me. I know that you do. I know that you do. So listen, for this um, session, I want to start off by asking you, India, our very first question. So tell me this. Sometimes, you know, when you were still here in the household and dad and I would talk to you about college and, you know, we'd be in the process of preparing you, we would share with you a little bit about our experience. And so there's a difference now. It's different now as opposed to to then. And so talk with us a little bit about that, just the, the differences and, and what, and, and a little bit about your perspective. I agree. A lot of the times growing up, you all said that this was the best experience for four years or five years of your lives. And I definitely agree with that. Um, I've had an absolute blast here. I've had so many experiences and have met so many different people that I can call lifelong friends. Um, I've built up my network to continue to grow. And so I definitely agree with that aspect. Growing up and being with my family 24-7 and then totally transitioning out of the home into a college um, campus, it was new for me. I usually um, depend on my parents a lot in the family household. They did a lot of things and solved a lot of situations that I was in. And so being on the college campus, I had to start initiating relationships with professors and take initiative myself so that I can be successful um, in my college career. Number two, I was the first born. And so I was thankful that my parents did go to college and they were able to um, help me you know, guide my college experience, but I was also the firstborn. And so um, I didn't have older siblings to help me through the transition just because the college experience then and now looks a lot different than what it was. And so um, I had to continue to try hard and work hard and to not give up so that I can set a great example for my younger siblings. And then the third thing is I've learned a lot about the people around me. Um, I've made connections. I've join different organizations so that I can stay proactive um, because there's learning in the classroom and learning the concepts, especially with my engineering degree and learning um, skill sets, but there's also learning about the community around me and um, reaching outside of my comfort zone so that I can grow as an individual and continue to learn on an everyday basis. Awesome, awesome. You know what? You just uh, mentioned something as it pertained to just the newness of being on a college campus after coming from a close-knit family. You know what? I think I just want to just stick a pin right in that thought there because that newness, India, I know that when you left home and you went onto the college campus, then, you know, that newness had to cause just a little bit of stress just a little bit. So if you can just please speak to our emerging mothers just a little bit about those stress points after the transition, because, you know, some of them, they're having juniors and seniors right now, and they're going to be trans transitioning out. And I just want them to understand just a little bit, you know, what occurs, what happens to a teen after they have let, left that close-knit setting. 
Um, yeah, that's definitely a great point. Um, I spoke a little bit on how I was very close with my family. We did everything together um, and we grew as a unit. And so being away from the family home, it was definitely hard, um, especially the fact that my family's in Texas and I'm in Virginia. So it was a huge learning curve for me to try to um, find life outside of the bubble that I was that I knew growing up. And so um, one of the biggest things that I had to overcome was homesickness. Um, and now don't get me wrong, I still miss my family. I love them. I try to go home as much as I can. But trying to overcome that obstacle and being away from them for an extended period of time before I was able to go back for break, I had to try to get acclimated with the campus and the community that was present so that I had a strong foundation um, here that I know that I have in Texas as well. And so, um, and I really able to cope with that by, you know, meeting new people, um, being in different organizations, diving into my academics and doing well in my courses um, so that I can continue to build a life here in Virginia um, and be successful. And so that's one of the things that I had to overcome. Um, and it's definitely gotten better. And I know that being outside of the family home, I know that I can, you know, do well wherever I go now that I've had I've had this experience and being in a full-time position in Northern Virginia, I know that I can do well just because this college experience has helped me grow in a lot of those ways. And so that's number one. Um, number two is being on a campus that's a little than what my high school looked like. Um, I am from Houston, Texas, and it's a little bit, uh, or it's known as a cultural melting pot. Um, it's funny because my family will call the street that I live, live on Sesame Street just because you have different people from different backgrounds who live there. Um, and so coming from that mindset and environment, hopping onto a campus that's um, known as a predominantly white institution or a PWI was very different for me. Um, being the only black person in a class full of 300 people was a huge learning curve as well. And I, that's something that I had to get used to so that I'm able to communicate with different people. Um, and so building study groups and then talking to other people within my residence hall and forming those connections and those relationships so that I can continue to do my best in school was another huge life skill that I've had to learn. And um, it's been great ever Awesome, awesome. I'm just loving these responses. And so, you know, even if, you know, throughout these uh, years you've been away, you know, even if, you know, the adjustments were a challenge, you know, maybe here and there, we just knew to say, okay, Jesus, take the wheel. And so, you know, we just relied on him and counted on him. And so, of course, we were able to be successful process. You know, my next question is this, because, you know, years and years ago, you know, we had, you know, I'm even trying to think if we even had the internet, we were still um, using envelopes and writing letters on paper and folding that up and mailing that off to people. Right now on the college campus, there's all types of technology that's new. And uh, there's social media that's phenomenal as well. So as a teen who has transitioned out of the home on a college campus, uh, talk to us a little bit about that in itself, that the social media, the technology, and how that has been, you know, what your perspective is about that and how that has enhanced your experience. For sure. Technology and social media um, can be used for good and sometimes there are cons to it as well as we've seen in our daily life just because there are so many things that we use our um, phone for and technology for um, and within this generation you know social media that's people just trying to connect with one another and so um, being on a college campus it can definitely be a huge distraction if you allow it to be but there are a lot of study habits in place um, depending on what type of visual learner you are or um, whatever type of learner you are there's a lot of things that you can do and 
doing it while practicing your discipline as well and making sure that your priorities are straight um, so that you're able to continue to study and not allow that to be a distraction for you. One of the study habits that I've used is 50 minutes of study time and then 10 minutes on the phone. And so that's an hour um, completing a task or an assignment or working towards studying for a course that you've done. And then you'll take a little break at the end um, so that you can rejuvenate and revisit that um, assignment or task later on. And then, um, so if I study for three hours at a time, I'm doing three subjects in that um, study space. And so that has, is something that has helped me as well. Some people use apps that will shut down their phone so that they're able to study um, for a cer certain amount of time and get something done. And then they'll pick up their phone again and um, get back on their phone if that's what they want to do and some people just delete their social media um which i've seen as well and that can be helpful so it just depends on what people use it for but i think discipline is the biggest thing with that being a distraction um because it could also be a resource as well um because there are a lot of things on the internet that can allow us to study and um understand a concept better wow and then you are drawing and so many nuggets. I appreciate that. Those are definitely some strategies. Listen, I know that we have some folks on social media right now. If you know of any strategies that your teen is using right now, just feel free to drop it down in the comment section regarding what your teen is using or if your teen can embrace any of these nuggets that you just dropped. I know that it would be valuable for or for your teen rather. So when you landed then on the campus after you left home, you know, one of, um, I know, the thought that teens may embrace um, is, you know, they're wondering sometimes, you know, will I fit in? And, you know, you're, you're knowing that you're, you're different than a number of the folk on campus. Uh, you know, you mentioned the PWI. Uh, that's where you've, of course, in, enjoyed your academic journey. Uh, knowing that, that a number of, that, that you are amongst the culture where it's lesser of. So how did you manage relationships there on the college campus uh, after that transition? I think that's such an important question. Just And I think you may have gone on mute, have India. Let me see. Okay. Are you able to hear me now? Okay. You're good now. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, I think that's such an crucial point that you just made about relationships just because we want to have to deal with different people on a basis within team settings and our jobs, um, maybe at church or in our social careers. I think managing relationships is very important. And so um, on a college campus, there's so many. I go to a, a Virginia Tech and there's about 30,000 students on campus. And so there's so many um, people to learn from and to um, grow from, and I'm just not talking about people who agree with you, but people who may have different opinions, perspectives on ideas, that can allow you to grow as well as an individual in hearing their side of the story. And so I think that relationship and mediation is so important. Um, and my experience with it, just being in different leadership positions, um, I think is important to collaborate and work with people who are different for uh, from you as well, just because they bring something new to the table. And my strengths may contribute to the overall team goal, but my weaknesses are there as well. And my weaknesses um, may pair with somebody else's strengths and they can be better at something than I am. And so um, I think that's why it's so important to talk with different people and work on different ideas with them. Um, but when it comes to relationships, um, it's just important to know how to manage them. Um, sometimes I may be wrong. Sometimes somebody else may be wrong. But just talking that out, I know, I've i learned that communication is key. Um, and learning why someone's unable to do something or why they would be the best fit for something um, is an important decision for any leader to make. And so um, this is a great life skill. I know that I've had to call you a lot um, to learn more about emotional intelligence when I've had a disagreement with someone in my maybe sorority or someone on a leadership team with me. And so that has been important in learning the four aspects of emotional intelligence so that I'm checking them, um, making sure that I'm 
doing what I need to do to be a great leader and a great friend on campus. Um, and I also think that it's important to allow people or to teach other students in my RA career. I've had to uh, mediate a lot of conflicts between roommates. And so we've had to go through the different steps to come to a solution. But along with that, I've also had to educate them on a allowing them to work out the situation for themselves. If this happens next time, what will you do differently? How will y'all communicate as a payer so that you do not have to involve me as your RA and you're figuring out these these problems on your own? Um, and I think that's very important as well with relationship management, knowing how to communicate with someone um, and and so that you can be a better uh, leader in the future. Awesome. Awesome. And I know that you'll be able to take some of those skills that you've learned there in leadership roles over to your career. And I'm super excited about that. So let me tell, let me ask you this. So when it comes to diversity on that campus, would you say that, because I know that, you know, in the Facebook community, those who follow me on Instagram and then those who uh, jump on Zoom whenever I'm doing my lives come from different walks of life. Some people from Canada, some from Australia, uh, Caucasians, African-Americans, Africans, uh, Pakistanian, uh, Hispanics, a number of different cultures. When it comes to diversity, how important is that? Because, you know, the emerging mothers, being from all of these different cultures, you know, they may have a team to transition out and go on to land on a college campus and they may see people different than themselves. Do you think just maybe just, you know, embracing some strategies and really focusing on relationship management, that would help to move them forward as well? Because really the number one goal is that you're looking to get a degree. And so interacting with people, can that be done alone? I have yet to see it be done alone. I mean, you, First and foremost, you need your professor. So getting along with everyone, moving aside biases is critical. You would say that that's important to you? Most definitely. Um, I, If I were to walk into a conference room and discuss an event or an idea to shape the future and to serve the community, I wouldn't want everybody to look like me and have the same opinions as me. Mm -hmm. I would want people from different walks of life to be in that conference room so that they can bring new ideas to the table and they can um, introduce a new perspective that wasn't um, shared before. And so I think that's extremely important. I've learned a lot about diversity while I've been on this campus at Virginia Tech. And I've learned that it's a mixture of kind of two things. So number one, diversity could look like within a group of people, um, everybody just looks different. Um, so that could be diversity or within a group of people, um, you're just taking into consideration some of the different backgrounds and experiences that someone has had um, rather than just the way they look. And so I feel like diversity can mean a, more than one thing. And I've learned that in my experience here. And I think um, talking about different topics like microaggressions and um, bias and having those mm -hmm. workshops here on campus, um, I heard a great educator on this campus um, differ the two between diversity and inclusion. And we might touch on inclusion a little later, but I just wanted to present this beforehand with this topic right here. So she just said, diversity is being asked to the party and then inclusivity is being asked to dance. And so I hope that gives you a better picture um, of the difference between the two. And I, that really just stuck with me and how I communicate with people because we can all look different. But once I invite people to that, to the, to dance or to the conference room to get their perspective, I'm not doing what I need to do as a leader and as an individual to help other people be great as well. Wow. That's deep. I love that. And that does add an in-depth perspective as it pertains to the difference between the two. So that is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm glad that um, in the different organizations, in the associations, 
there on the campus, you've been able to experience that. And I know that you've inserted yourself so that you could just embrace the entire college experience. Would you say, what, what, what would you say about like, um, goal setting? Just to turn the page just a little bit, goal setting. What would you say about that setting goals? I think that goal setting is a tremendous thing. I like to set or create a vision board at new chapters in my life so that I know um, what I'm looking forward to and what I would like to accomplish. Um, one of my strengths is futuristic thinker, um, along with responsibility and relator and belief and developer. Um, futuristic thinker is up there. And so I like to set goals for myself, whether that's short-term goals or long-term goals. And so within my college career, the long-term goal was to always graduate with a degree and to have a full-time job once I do. And I've been blessed to almost um, achieve those two goals. And then some short-term goals, they change with every semester, um, whether that's in my leadership positions or with grades and classes or with trying to um, get connected with the students in my classes or professors better. Um, I think that goal setting is a tremendous effort to want to do better and to grow every day and to do better than what you did yesterday. Um, I think a lot of the times as college students, we like to compare ourselves with other students, um, but it's, it's important to remember that we're not all on the same path, even though um, students in the same major as you and they're taking the same classes, um, they're destined to possibly do something different than you. And so I think it's really important to compare um, ourselves to what we want to do and how we want to grow as an individual and how we want to connect with different people in our lives. Okay, okay. Well, and, and that's super exciting. And I know uh, that some of our emerging mothers will be encouraged because even as their teens are on the college campus, they're going to, I'm sure they're going to inspire them to set goal after goal after goal. So after their teen has set one goal, then once that has been accomplished, then it'll be time for another goal. And it'll be time, you know, no one's waiting around. Listen, we have this, this life that is, um, a, like a vapor, <laughs> uh, scripture says, and so and it will come and go, and so we want to live life, and we want to live it more abundantly, so that second goal is just, it's crucial, it's crucial. So whether we're talking about setting goals, or we're, whether we're talking about just simply uh, managing on, on the college campus, um, support is needed. Support is needed. Advising is needed. And so did you, what were your thoughts and actions as it pertained to seeking out support and someone to help you? And really, you know, this could be in a number of different areas because when you're living life on a campus, whether academic help is needed, maybe help is needed, support is needed with, you know, maybe health matters and remaining safe, um, there could, you know, help, you know, if we're working a position in, uh, with an employer, you know, so support. How would you go about seeking support? I think seeking support is the one of the best things that you can do on campus. Um, one of the things that I've learned about myself is that I don't like to ask for help. Um, and that's something that I need to learn as an individual that asking for help is okay and I can't do everything by myself. Um, but when it gets to a point where you're struggling and so many things are going on and you want to do better, then it's okay to ask for help. Go to a professor office hours or go to tutoring sessions hosted by the, the university or initiate study groups within your friend groups. Um, there are a lot of resources here on Virginia and I think that that is a blessing to the students here because the university wants to help um, students and they offer a lot of support in different ways, whether that's the community, the cultural community centers um, and the student center. And I think we have about five or six or seven on campus or whether that's cook counseling or the women's center. There's just so many resources that students can be involved with, excuse me, um, that 
they can take advantage of the writing center and getting a, an extension on your paper just for going and asking for help. There's so many things that you can do just so that you can be successful. I think the biggest thing that I've had to learn in my um, years in college is to not be intimidated. Everybody is trying to learn a new concept. And so don't get intimidated about asking for help. Don't be scared. Professors really want to help you. Um, they usually have a higher level of knowledge in these concepts. And so um, they love when you ask questions and they love helping you if you take the time out to give them that chance. And so I think that's the biggest thing I've had to learn. I was a little intimidated my first year because I didn't want anybody to find me out. Um, I didn't want you know, um, to feel less than, but when I learn more, I can be, be I can do better in my classes and excel. And so, um, yes, I think seeking support or resources is one of the best things that you can do. There you have it. Emerging mothers, listen, encourage your teens to reach out once they land on that college campus. It could even be the military base, even if they're getting their own apartment they're pursuing residential independence. Listen, there are answers out there. They will have questions. Encourage them to reach out, especially if they're unable to get in contact with you or you are unaware or unsure what the answer uh, is. And please encourage them to reach out. And even as India and my second daughter, Iman, have been away, then, you know, there's been some ways um, because, you know, again, close-knit family, it's important for us to still communicate. It's important for there to be interaction still back home uh, and that that connection is still there. I know that was so and is so important to myself and also their dad. And so setting that communication schedule or uh, doing something whereas that line back home, that communication line is still active. Do you think that's important, India? And uh, what are you doing? Uh, in order for us to make sure that we're still connecting? I think that's extremely important. Um, my family is super close, and so um, they really push me forward. They are very supportive, um, and they just want the best for me. They set goals for me that um, they know that I can achieve, even when sometimes I don't think I can do it myself. And so um, keeping that those ties, those relationship ties with my family is extremely important and it has gotten me where I am today. Um, and so keeping that line of communication open, um, I am, I'm going to admit, I am different than my sister. Um, I am a little bit more on the independent side where my sister will call my family probably every day. Um, I will connect with them maybe once, once a week, once every other week. Um, but I think my mom and the other members of my family have made it um, a point to host family calls so that we are all connecting with one another. And we're just figuring out, you know, how's everyone doing, how we can connect each other with different resources that we don't know about, and to just encourage one another as the week goes by. And so I think that has been very important so that I um, am able to see them, but I'm also meeting new members of the family um, as well. And they're doing great things in their lives that I have never heard about. And so um, that has been great. And then at the beginning of the semester, looking for full-time job positions, my mother and I made it a point to um, connect every Sunday. And every Sunday I had the goal to add 10 more job companies apply to um, on the ex the spreadsheet, the Excel spreadsheet that we shared with one another so that I am um, staying on top of it and she is keeping me accountable um, so that I can, you know, reach my goal of getting a job. And so um, once I was able to do that, then we moved on to the next goal that I set for myself. So um, I think it really helps just because I'm on a college full of students and peers um, learning from my parents. They are very wise, and so I'm able to continue to do better um, each and every day because of them. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much for answering. And of course, you know, our, our lawn man is here. Just, you know, whenever there's something going on, 
then uh, then of course, yes, uh, the lawn men show up. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we will continue. And I do have a couple of more questions to ask India. And I hope you all are still able to hear me. Uh, remaining positive is key. Would you say that there were, that there have been some times when remaining positive was a challenge? What are your thoughts regarding positivity? Um, I think that college um, just presents so many challenges that I have never faced before in my life. Um, and so trying to balance schoolwork and extracurriculars and trying to be involved with leadership positions and maybe sometimes worrying about finances or getting a job in school or getting a full-time job after school or for the summer, um, plus relationships on top of that. People do, you know, boyfriends or struggling um, friendships and don't know whether to that whether it's good or bad. Um, college students have to deal with a lot um, and then being away from home as well. And so um, staying positive is really important to be challenging at times. Um, but some of the key steps that I've had to take is to take moments for myself, take self-care breaks. And so that looks like maybe um, watching a movie in between assignments or tasks or um, putting on a face mask or doing my nails or just cleaning up and doing laundry. Sometimes that's very therapeutic for me as well. Um, that's very important. And I try to stress that to my residents as well, just because it can be a lot. And then adding the pandemic on top of that, um, people are just all going through something all the time and you never know what other people are going through. Um, another thing I do is I meet with friends. So some of my friends are on campus, some of my friends are off campus, and we try to get together and just hang out and try new activities from time to time so that we are enjoying this college experience. Um, and it's just not all work, work, work all the time because that can be extremely challenging sometimes when it is. And then the third thing I do is I speak to people and I stay around people who are positive as well and they motivate me and they encourage me um and it's not a bad relationship at all and I think that's also very important in college students meet different groups of people um and they have to try to figure out if this is their friend group and if if it's good for them or if it's bad for them and they have to separate or cut themselves off from them friends and so um i try to do that as well just so that i'm able to encourage you you're able to encourage me and we're able to continue moving or kind of filling each other's bucket in a sense awesome 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 i totally agree that positivity is so important and can take you further than you can imagine if that positivity was non-existent and so i so so agree well listen I'm going to wrap that up, and I am so excited, again, India, that you have come today. I really appreciate you taking your time out of your busy schedule. I know that just probably last night or the night before, you were probably up all night. You were handling your residential assistance um, responsibilities, and so um, I really appreciate you being here, and I look forward to you coming back. And to you, Emerging Mothers, I'm so excited that you've decided to join us. And for those who were unable to join us, of course, you'll see this vid in our Facebook group, Emerging Mothers. If you have yet to join us, if you will please search us on Facebook and then answer the questions, then we'll let you write in. Also, guess what? There is an opportunity for you to DM me if you'd like more information or if you'd like to talk with me one-on-one. -on -one. I do have clients who are wanting one-on-one, -on -one. and then there's a 12-month program that I offer, whereas you will receive a mindset coach. Secondly, you will receive a transition playbook. You will receive, if you will, a, an assessment, a mother teen assessment, and there are a number of other offerings within this 12-month program. So I appreciate you. I am so glad you were able to do this fun today, and I encourage you to search us, Emerging Mother on Facebook, Hit me up on Instagram. Also, I am doing lives on Zoom as well every Tuesday at 6 p.m. I look forward to seeing you there as well. Thank you so much. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you, India.
Thank you for having me.